Pardon? Uh, is your university still uh, in exam week? Uh, no, uh, we all, we just uh, finished the exam uh, yesterday, so uh, we start going uh, for a uh, holiday for the semester until uh, in the end of August and then in the beginning of September, we will start um, our uh, semester. Uh, all right. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think we can start our event today. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, selamat pagi kepada semua partisipan hari ini dan uh, sebelumnya mewakili uh, Prodi Arsitektur Universitas Amikom Yogyakarta saya juga ingin mengucapkan selamat Hari Raya Idul Adha bagi yang merayakan uh, pada kesempatan kali ini izinkan saya untuk uh, menyampaikan pengantar uh, menggunakan bahasa Inggris uh, sampai dengan uh, selesai acara oke okay. um, Excellencies, the head of architecture study program, Bapak Amir Fata Sofian, the honorable professor, Dr. Ismail Saif, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends. My name is Risa Aidila Suprapto. It is an honor to meet all of you here. And it is a good opportunity also to begin this month by staying productive, even though we are in the pandemic situation. And I hope you all stay safe, no matter where you are. In this occasion, we will have a standing presentation from our special guest today, who I believe will enrich our insight and knowledge regarding the theme of this public lecture today. Before the presentation begin, Allow me to introduce our speaker today, Professor Dr. Ismail Saif. He was studied bachelor degree in uh, 1983 at Landscape Architecture of Iowa State University, USA. After that, he continued his master at Landscape Architecture of Kansas State University, USA in 1985. Then, in 2006, uh, he finished his doctorate degree in University Technology, Malaysia. He has several awards and honors received, such as Anugrah Hitma Cemerlang in 2017. Uh, then, he received silver medal at Innovative Practices in Higher Education Expo 2015 at University Technology, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Then he also received a Malaysia Landscape Architecture Award for the research with title application of rest measurement in measuring perception on workable environment in the landscape research category, Institute of Landscape Malaysia. He has many professional experience, among others are associate professor at University Malaysia since 1973, uh, until now. Uh, he was visited professor at Department of Landscape Architecture, School of Life Science and Agriculture, Seoul National University, South Korea in 2012. He also was visited researcher in 2010 at Graduate School for International Development and Cooperation, Hiroshima University, Japan. Now, he active as a head of Green Innovation Research Group, Resources yeah. Sustainability Research Alliance, UTM. In International Committee, he also appointed as executive member of Asia Cultural Landscape Association, so National University since 2013 until now. He has some interest in research topics that are children environment, urban greening and green infrastructure, ecosystem services, carbon stocking, urban morphology and place attachment, and vernacular architecture. Um, without further ado, I would like to welcome our speaker today. Please warm welcome for Professor Dr. Ismail. The time is yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Risa from Universitas Chemicom for inviting me uh, to share my knowledge on attributes and values of space and place in Southeast Asian cities. <clears throat> uh, can you post the slides? Okay, we will begin the slide. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, uh, thank you, all participants, either students, docents, and those who are in interested in this topic on attributes and values of urban space in Southeast Asian cities. Uh, as uh, I'm teaching uh, in the landscape architecture department as a professor, <clears throat> uh, have been teaching for the past uh, 35 years. Uh, now, much of my time are uh, focused on supervising PhD students. Uh, that, that means that uh, many of the knowledge that I'm going to present to you all, to share you all, actually are derived from my PhD students <clears throat> research. So uh, this topic on urban space is a thing that are uh, applied to many disciplines, particularly in our architecture, urban planning, urban design, and at least landscape architecture. So uh, I would like to uh, to uh, part uh, to divide this lecture into four sectors. One, meaning of space and place. Then I will show you what is the meaning of streets. Then uh, I will show you also what are the meaning of open spaces with some of the ways places that I, that I have visited. Finally, the last slide is on uh, what do we gain from this uh, lecture. Uh, this lecture may be may not be uh, may be con may be contradict with many other uh, if you were to hear to many other things because uh, space and place is uh, has so many meanings. Okay, so uh, let's go to the first slide, please. <coughs> okay. Um, when we talk about space and place, uh, uh, space and place actually are two different things. Uh, space is dimension where place, how you feel it. So therefore, it is a continuum of from space, then it becomes place. So it is a continuum or we can call an extent. Uh, let me read these phrases so that uh, become some of the fundamentals for this uh, lecture. Human experience of a space turns it into a place. So therefore, in here, we are looking at much of, about human experience. Uh, I would like you all to look at the slides where there are, that shows uh, fruits, a banana, it's an Ambon example. I took this in 2006 or, yeah, it's a long time ago at Manado. And uh, near outside the Pasar Besar of Manado, main market. And we can see that that trader, the old lady, is selling bananas and display it well to attract her customer. So here is, uh, she knows that what she's doing is very pragmatic, meaning that she has to sell bananas to her customer. But many of her customer actually are her patron. What is meant by patron is people that visited and see him offer her often. Therefore, uh, without saying a word, she understand what, what do uh, that the patron wanted. This is far different if you go to the mall where the cashier do not notice who you are. But here, the bonding between the seller and the patron are so strong. So therefore, for her, this space, which is a parking lot outside the open market, actually is a place for her to sell her product produce and to meet her patron. So therefore, uh, both the seller and the patron are experience the place we call special experience. It is uh, immediate. It is has this uh, bodily posture, and it is instinctive. Uh, allow me to give you an example here. Uh, instinctive means that uh, without saying a word from the patron, the seller that late, that woman knew what she, that the patron wants, looking at her gesture. 
Why is that? Because the patron repeatedly visited her. So this, there is a bond uh, that happened in a place, but not in a film, right? Uh, if you were to look at the slides next to it, where the, it shows street food store in Hanoi, in Hanoi, early in the morning from 7 to, let's say, about 8.30 to 9 a.m. in the morning, the streets, the sidewalk, the corridor become a food street stall where people in Vietnamese love to eat pho. Pho is a thing that uh, Vietnamese eat. Morning, lunch, perhaps dinner, what, two to three times a day. But the streets actually become is a, is a space for this activity to happen, this communal activity to happen. But for those who are, have to use, have been eating the, at this place many, many times, uh, when before they go to the office, they have to visit this place. So the space become a place. Why? Because the people who eat for the noodles, mi ayam, right? are actually familiar much with the place. Therefore, they don't see just a space. They see as their place. So in architecture, urban design, urban planning, we need to differentiate between what is a space and what is a place. So this slide is among the nine slides that I'm going to define between space and place. I hope that uh, from this you get a uh, new knowledge on what we call as everyday urbanism. All right. So, uh, next slide, please. Okay. Now, is this a place is quite a uh, <clears throat> Perhaps those who have been to the city of Banjarmasin, uh, you can see that uh, food stalls, Roba, Lasihan, are many. Uh, of course, Jogja, there are plentiful of them. All right. So, therefore, when we look at this, um, when we look at this, <clears throat> uh, that the Presence of this food stall here is called Warung Sahabat. This Warung Sahabat uh, that they sell nasi kuning, lontong, and soto. Sell it. Uh, the owners sell it uh, all along the streets. Uh, for the lontong or for the soto banjar. So therefore, there is this partial experience that the people come here. So it's very pragmatic in that people need food. It's perceptual, people see lots of things to choose from. And then it's existential, meaning that it exists because there are one who sells, they are one who buy it. So this happened this happen along the streets in many Southeast Asia. Uh, cities. Here is in Banjar Masin. All right. So can I go next? I'm going to come. So I like uh, to note that I uh, hope that uh, all uh, participants uh, remember this word pragmatic, perceptual, and existential for a spatial experience. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. All right, here is a thing that I think you all may have been to this place. Yeah, is one of the Pasar Limpa in Jogja. The traders place their goods on both sides of the road before the shops and main market opens. I experienced this three or four years ago when, when I visited uh, Jogja. So this is a phenomena, a temporal phenomena, meaning that it lasts two to three hours before the real market opens. But the diversity of it, the aroma of the place, 
the actions of people, the sellers and the buyers are so vibrant. So therefore, this is actually for those who visited many times, it's a place. For me who visited it the first time, it's just a space, yeah? For those who visited here many times, they can, they can know what chilies they like to buy, from whom. Uh, 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 from whom they can find uh, ikan bandeng to buy from, from that lady showing peace with her fingers, right? Uh, or what jeruk and other vegetables that they like to buy, from whom? So all this happening to in Pasar Limpa. So Pasar Limpa, to a newcomer like me, is just a space. But to the people who sell here for many years and come every single day, it is a place. Therefore, Pasar Limpa is a phenomenon that exists in, main, in most major cities in Indonesia, for which these are the cities that I have visited. Manado, Makassar, Surabaya, Banjarmasin, Solo, Jogja, Bogor, Pekanbaru, Padang. So many of these places. So, so this become a place for which that we architect, landscape architect, urban designer, and urban planner need to recognize it. It is a place formed by people experience it. For which that is pragmatic, meaning that people need it. It's essential, it's a must to have this Pasar Limpa and so forth, right? So actually, if you look further on, there is a collective activities. People sell on the floor, on the roads. Then once uh, it's over, they pack it quickly and they vanish from the, pl from the place, from the space, okay? So it is also a cultural practices. A practice is that can, is on and on. That follows certain non-written rules. We call it norms. They are having their own norms in here. Uh, each, pet, each seller know that where is the spot for them to sell it for the next day. And someone will not take over the spots where he going and so forth, right? And of course, in Jogja, you will not miss uh, Nanka, correct? For them to make good. So this happened here because it's, it is a cultural practice. Therefore, place leads to cultural development. I repeat, place leads to cultural development. All right. Uh, next slide, slide, please. All right. Uh, now I'd like to bring you all to Hanoi. <clears throat> For those who have been to Hanoi, you can see that early in the morning, the streets are busy with motorcycles. Not by the hundreds, but tens of thousands of motorcycles. Why? People ride motorcycles. If we were to go 20 years ago, you would see not motorcycles, bicycles. So the norms of human interactions has changed from riding bicycles to motorcycles. So roads to them has changed. Yeah. More so, if you were to be to Hanoi or in Ho Chi Minh City, you see that junctions with four lanes, there's no traffic light. So how do people move? So they move in between. The rules is, the norm is, they avoid not to knock each other. So we see that it's seldom accident, even that there's no traffic light. So the behavior of the Vietnamese using the roads differs from those Malaysians. If Malaysia with a traffic light, all things will be jammed. Uh, all things will be matched. Will, car cannot move because people do not tolerate. But here, Vietnamese are so tolerant to it. If you look at the lady with uh, selling the fruits on carrying that two baskets on her shoulder, she doesn't need a shop. She doesn't need a grow bar, but she moves from one place to another. Her moment is short but she knows where to place her produce so that by the end of, let's say, three hours, all her produce is been sold. So this is the things that happen in a city like Hanoi. Differs from us, much different from Malaysia cities. We don't have this at here, but perhaps this can also happen in, city, in small cities in Indonesia. Should it be that part of our culture? Yes, because it's a collective activities, because it's a pra cultural practices. 
right? Therefore, let me read here. Human interactions with an environment are closely intertwined. Yes. They know where to place their baskets for them to sell. With social system, culture, and hierarchical systems. They are interested in shared sense of place derived from collective activities and cultural practices. Therefore, to the Vietnamese, the meaning of place of the streets differs from us. Why? Because it's influenced by social norms and produced by social cultural system and ideologies. Can I go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> All right, uh, we are still in Hanoi. Uh, you see, urban space are well shared. Urban space are public space. If you look at the people sitting on a short uh, bench, short chairs, yeah, are eating po, that only lasts about two to three hours. After that, the space is changed to another purpose, perhaps parking for motorcycle, or perhaps people sell other product, not normal food. So that's what happening in the city of Hanoi. Because why? People see a place with a complex of use. Complexity of space can be understood through various level of human interaction. In the morning, they eat breakfast. After that, they sell watches. After that, they, they shine the shoes over here, or a place for them to walk over multifaceted human experience. So in geography, this is an important matter, human geography, because we need to see uh, urban spaces as a, as a public spaces, uh, spaces that care less about privacy, uh, spaces that allows as many multiple use as possible. So therefore, a space has changed to a place because place is an experiential landscape, meaning that People change space to place because they experience the place, right? If a setting is, if space is a setting open for movement and experience, place is a pause in movement, meaning that you pause to take for breakfast in Vietnam, in Hanoi. The construction of place is influenced by new experiential knowledge, therefore, when you keep on repeat, come to this place, you get sense of it. But for us who come to this at the first time, we see as a space, we get an, an, a new experiential knowledge. Uh, this is part of the new urbanism. Uh, everyday urbanism, sorry, everyday urbanism. Thank you. Next, please. All right. Now, uh, there are this. Two more slides that I'm going to show. I'm going to define between space and place. So I'm not going to show an example that is in Asian cities. This one is in, in Nagoya. The reasons that I show that cubicle, uh, greenish cubicle and red cubicle sculptures in Nagoya, actually it represents a toilet. This is a kamar kecil ni sini. So it's very geometric. So people visit here the space because of that geometric form. So space is geometrical and quantifiable. You can you can you can measure it. Uh, you can show people show the dimensions in their working drawings. Architects, example, right? So that's the walkway along the mall. So this is all we call space. For which that uh, most municipality authority will manage space. But to manage place is different. So managing space, you can put rules, but managing place, the rules is the norms of the people that utilize the space repeated, repeatedly, regularly. That's the meaning of space. Now, can I go to the next slide to look at meaning of place? <clears throat> next slide, okay. So meaning of place that a place it's no more dimensional. It's how people interpret it. Therefore, it is subjective. How people get affections to it. Example, if you will go to the to 
Banjarmasin along the river Sungai Matapura, you see many floating village, a floating market. Example here. This exists after immediately after Fajar. For one or two hours after that, they disappear and go to sell the produce, right? And many of the people who are in this uh, boat called Klota uh, are people that uh, much uh, knew that that river is their place. It's not just a space. Because where they knew where to locate themselves, right? And they know how to act upon it. The sellers who sell jeruk, pisang, uh, singkong, yeah? they know how to trade to others who are selling uh, klapa, right? Uh, so this, so action is happening in a place. Therefore, a space is what it is, yeah. But the place is how it is used. So we architect design space, but we need to think how it used because we have to see how the user use it to become as, as their place. Place, not space, frame appropriate behavior. Yeah, if you are come here, you don't follow the norms, you are an odd. That means you will be out of place. That will in my next slide. Can I go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> okay. Uh, you look at the last line. What is the difference between out of space and out of place? Uh, if you go to Matapura, uh, these shops have two fronts. One fronting the roads, the other fronting the Sungai Matapura. You see, if we don't follow the norms, we'll be out of place. We do come here, we are out of space, but our place is more severe. So we need to, we visit, or we who are visiting here often, we know how to make ourselves fit to the place. So we are in the place, not out of place. Why? Because human experience of a space turns it into a place. Spatial experiences are instinctive. Like if you were to come here uh, in Bajar Masin, you know that where you're going to find your nice uh, soto, yeah, or your nice uh, uh, ikan patin here, right? Yeah, the dish of ikan patin, right? And then you know how to situate yourself by following the norms, observing and following norms. So you'll be in the place, not our place. Our space means that you are not here. But our place, you are still here. But if you don't follow the norm, you against the behavior of the local, then you are our place. Therefore, when we design spaces in urban, we need to think about this. How people behave in a place. These are subjective notions that people act upon them at the place. Uh, next, please. All right. Here is a slide. On the left is a slide uh, at uh, Kampung Lewaya, uh, Lawian in Solo, which I took, I think, 15 years ago of children uh, waiting for a bus before they go to school. So this is a street, a small street waiting for the bus. But that occasion when children play marbles children play cards, children exchange stories. So that streets is no more just a space to them through the interactions, through their voices, through their actions, the streets become their place. It's no more a streets of a space. It's a streets of a place. And here they can have its own sense of control set their own boundaries and associate with their own bodies. If you look at those children on the left, on the right, where this is a street in Madras, during a downpour, the streets become their playground. The streets become their swimming pool. The streets become, they have their own sense of control. They act on their own way how to play in the streets without the instructions of the parents. So therefore, here, during this temporal moment, during a short time, when it floods, the street becomes their place. Why? 
here they gain social agency. What is a social agency? Friends, buddies. Here they connect with the friends, how to laugh together, how to hang all over the truck. This is that is called social connectivity. Here they learn from each other how to swim, how to jump from a fence into the water. That is called social competence. So in children growth and development, when children attain these three factors, social agency, social connectivity, and social competence, that means they are in a good well-being, quality of life. So therefore, meaning that when we provide space, the streets can become a space for them to have these three factors, social agency, connectivity, and competence the street can become their play space. Next, please. This is a research of my students, uh, almost completing her, her PhD research on less privileged children in the city center of Makassar, old city center of Makassar, whereby these less privileged children, they don't have money to get grabbed or get taxi or get patch up to go to school. They walk to school. On the way back, they will play at the steps of B and I. When my student asks, uh, why you want you play that? One day, I would like to be a banker. You see, meaning that the streets, the, the steps, the bank outside, uh, uh, the, the outside, the space outside the bank building become a play space. This is their place. And then when they uh, see post Christmas, the clinic, they will look in it, at, in it, at inside. When my student asked them, what do you, why do you do that? One day, I want to be a doctor. Meaning that when we allow streets to be used as how children see it, children develop their own imagination. Imagination is a crucial thing for children's development. And Stan used to say that if you have IQ, high IQ is not that, that important, but you have, must have a good imagination. So a streets can be a place for children to develop their imagination. Next, please. All right. So now I'm going to show an example of streets taken by one of a PhD student at my university. His name is Moku Khan, who is now teaching in Thailand. He, he is a Thai. So his research is on streets of Southeast Asia. She, he looked at streets, one in Hanoi. This is the, in Hanoi. Bangkok, Malacca in Malaysia, Jogja. And even he shows some example in Yangon. So the streets here, this is where you, you get your haircuts. Pankas rambut, yeah? Yeah. Here you get your haircut, right? So it's open. This thing will be disrupted and they have to run away from the rain when it rains. But this is how no, the norms in Hanoi. So we, uh, this, we allow this thing. We don't have saloon. But this is, this is happening in Hanoi. So it has its own identity. So the experience, this street become the experiential landscape for the people of Hanoi, Vietnamese, yeah, to create their own identity. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, example here in Yangon, people, uh, the, 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 the saloon is in the building. Then along the street, people sell fruits casually, like in Pasalimpa. All right, next slide, please. I'm going to run here fast because uh, this, yeah. And then for Chinese in Thailand, uh, during the time of the full moon, they need to worship. So the streets become a place for them to put the altar, yeah, for the for worshiping purposes. So this is how vibrant the street in Southeast Asia, they allow this thing. But if we would follow the guidelines of Western Europe or New Zealand or Australia or North America, this thing cannot happen. Because why? It's not, the, the streets is not part of the culture. Here, we practice our culture along the streets. 
in the streets. Example here in Bangkok. Next, please. <clears throat> and here, this is a Chinatown for which that in Bangkok, they sell uh, wholesaling uh, uh, onions and many others. They call Chinatown. But according to Mungu Khan, this, this place is no more Chinatown. The name stick as Chinatown. But the one who dominates here are Indians. So therefore, things change. Yeah, therefore, we, when we put up certain regulation, we allow certain chain. This change is that is, is existential because why? It changes how people interactions. It changes by people how see how people see this place turn into a place. Next, please. Uh, this one happened in Thailand, yeah, too, where the streets become place for people to give alms, donations to the monks. Next, please. All right. I borrowed this from Mako Khan uh, that the, the, the reasons that our streets in Southeast Asia are so vibrant because uh, the people practice informally. The complexity of the street actually happened not happen more on the ground level, for which that it become part of the urban identity. People giving arms, people selling onions, people selling fruits, jero, and so forth. Those are the complexity, right? So the build form express the capacity to accommodate all those informal activities. This is much happened in, in Makassar, of course in Georgia, where along during the daytime, people walk on the streets. After five, it be turned to Lassian and so forth. So it's multi-purpose. Why, why, why? Because those streets are their traditional streets. Those streets built by the norms and the notions that people believe in it. Thank you. Next slide, please. Okay. Now I like to turn to another part. This is where all open space. I have just three, four slides on open spaces. Uh, open spaces like in many cities in Malaysia, in Indonesia too, we have, you have alone, alone, we have here Padang, we call it. But here is one example and of a traditional city, a small city, town in Malaysia called Taiping, which Chinese mean peace. It is it, it originated by the British when they come here to get tin. When the tin is over, they left it with many lakes. So, but the town was well organized by the British, whereby this is the first town they organized in the great iron pattern. Look at the great iron pattern on the, on the left picture, right? So in order for this place to organize it so that it become a place people like to visit it, one of my PhD students, my first PhD student, Dr. Mazlina, study it. Why does the greenery, the open space here, makes the city as, has its own identity? They found that uh, this, this, this place, the, the greenery is coherent, meaning that it's tied up together. Uh, let me explain here. If you look on the right, uh, number one called Kampung Jambu, the plant on the right, right? Yeah, then you look at the section, uh, Kampung Jambu is where the residents are, uh, houses are. Then there are playground, you go to number two, then you see, you go, you from, you go from the garden, a home garden to the another garden, then to open fields. Then you go to town center, that street trees. Then you go to explain it's a padang, it's a alun alun. Then you to go be a big lake. This is uh, designed by the British 167 years ago. It's huge lake. This lake become one of the place that people do recreations. Therefore, recreational activities here is is been offered by the whole of the city, not just by one place. Okay, let me show you some interesting photos over that uh, that uh, lake. Can you go next slide, please? <clears throat> Here you see uh, this lake actually is the water come from the hills. It's at the back at the, at the background is the hill called Laro Hills. Yeah, it collects in this. Yeah, then it channel up to the into the 
drain and out from the city. So it's well kept. This has been, been preserved right from the British time, 167 years ago. Meaning that uh, you become the identity of this place. Therefore, Taipei become one of the favorite place for retirees to stay here because of this scenery. So in order to become, it become a city that has the character of greenery. First, the greenery are coherence and it's diverse, right? It's diverse. So there are, uh, diverse means that as many uh, type of greeneries that can happen. For at home, the home garden, the street streets, the esplanades, and the hills, Larut Hills, and the Padang, which is here, the Lake Garden. Next, please. All right. So in terms of uh, the theory part of it, why a place become successful in the green spaces, in open space, because first it's diverse, then it has its own naturalness. Natural means that it has its own native trees, native plants. Then it's coherent, it's tied up together, right? Then it's clean. Therefore, it becomes a place where people feel connective, physical, and social well-being here. <clears throat> Next, please. Okay, uh, this one I like to explain how I experience. This is uh, not in, in Asian cities, but in <clears throat> Hiroshima. I like to explain this why this is a big matter when we talk about uh, creating an open space. Uh, this is Hiroshima Peace Momero Park. Why it's called Peace? Because this is to commemorate uh, the day that Hiroshima was bombed, the atomic bomb dropped at 8.15 a.m. on the 6th of August, 1945. 6th or 8th of August, 1945. So if you look at here, at the map here on the right, uh, can you see there is a bridge here, Ayobashi bridge here? And then you can see there is here, because the park actually is on an island of a, of a river. So the bomb was dropped at this T junction here. Then the whole of the place destroyed. Uh, let me show you another slides uh, how it was destroyed. Then I come back to these slides. Uh, can I go to the next slides before we come back to this? Next slide, okay. You see before and after, before this island, you see there's a, there's a bridge here. So where the, where the bomb has been dropped by American uh, bomber, Ele Elena Gay, it drops, then the whole of the building perishes, except this building, which are, happen to be schools. But then the, the uh, Hiroshima municipal, municipal uh, city, 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 city hall, which is happened to be here, the, the building at the back here, uh, they, they want it to be turned into a memorial park so that people can feel back how this disaster is the, the time. So people, there's no more buildings here and no more uh, residents here, homes, but all is just public buildings. So can I go back to next, the, the first slide just now? The, the slide before? Okay, you see here, so at the back here on, on the left, yeah, you see a, a, a building that, that is the old, the old building destroyed, uh, partially destroyed during the bombing. But because it made of a steel structure, it survived the bomb. Although the bomb is just 100 meters away from, from, the bridge, uh, from the building. But the whole of this, of the park actually is perishes. Now it turned into a park, greeneries. People visit this. And then there is a state, there is a museum design was designed by Kenzo Tange in the 1970s, whereby people come from one end and, and goes to the other end through a journey of the bombing. And to feel that why it's so disastrous if you, if you to have this atomic bomb incident, right? Therefore, uh, we, uh, parks sometimes be designed because to commemorate things. To, to remember things. It's a very painful thing because why more than 300,000 people died on that day, right? Next, I'm now about to end my lecture now. Next, please. 
All right. I like to show some uh, just one idea of my student who in her final semester in the Bachelor of Science Architecture, looking at how we can turn a street and a park together. You join it together in a busy streets in a busy streets in Kuala Lumpur. Can you go to the next slide? Okay, so he turned it into a park for which that he has few uh, several subspaces, including learning forests, green parking, pollinator garden, amphitheater, forest plaza, garden library, interactive place, play space, and green volleyball. So this is one idea for which that we can teach our student how to turn something that is all concrete, but yet you can turn into greenery as an open space along the streets. In fact, under the highway. Can, can you go to the next slide? All right. So this, on the left are the, the master plan. The section really shows how it's been used so that even under the overpass, you can have a greenery, right? Then you, over there, they can hear you can have a children play ground. So therefore, we, when we put our mind into the, to design a place, we sometimes is a out of place, out of place space, we can bring it into a useful benefiting the public. Next, please. I think this is my last slide. Okay, let me have a summary here. Uh, streets and open space are social place. Yeah. The Pasalimpa is a social place. The river in Banjarmasin is a social place. The, the corridor in front of the shops in Banjarmasin, in front of Sungai uh, Matapura, is a social place, right? Interactions and transactions of people change a space into a place, yes. You have to notice this. Yeah, in, in the designer, we have to notice this, that it changed by the people. We need to, we need to create at the end, a place, not just a space. A space involves dimensions, whereas a place nurture values through norms and notions. Therefore, place is an experiential landscape. People experience in it. People develop a culture with it. Right? A Burns design should consider place not only a form as form and function, but a place as a social landscape. Orientations and identification of an individual are components which prove one existence, establish identity and building personal bonds to the environment. So when we design, we allow the users to get a certain bonding, the person with the environment. All right. So thank you for listening. Uh, I had just one hour, less than one hour. I hope that uh, this sharing session that I gathered from my travel to many places in Indonesia, as well as to many places, cities in Southeast Asia, uh, that will give you certain uh, knowledge. So I get it from my experience. So I journeyed myself, travels into the city like Hanoi, Phnom Penh, um, then to Bangkok, of course, many cities in Indonesia, right? You experience it. Then you see how people act on it. Eventually, you can see that how people change, uh, change space into a place. Thank you for listening. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Ismail, for the enlightenment. And I hope you still have time uh, to answer some uh, question from the participant today. And we have one question for from the participant today. Uh, it's from uh, Bapak Sukadi. Uh, the question is, um, Magelang City is very limited in the area. Even the border of the river doesn't exist due to house building how we can provide public space with limited land to interact between citizens, uh, especially people with disabilities and also children to play in their neighborhood. 
uh, therefore the right to have a safe and comfortable life can be guaranteed uh, maybe you can give your uh, opinion about this case prof uh, i never been been to your city but uh, i like to answer one aspect on the children hmm. uh, one thing that uh, when we deal with children don't see uh, that what we see is fit for the children uh, when design space for children, you have to put yourself in their shoes. Uh, example, when my student who, who did the research in Makassar on less privileged children, we thought that uh, the journey to school is dangerous, meaning that it's not safe. But she found that safety is not the concerns of the children. They, they, they feel safe because they walk with their bodies. Therefore, uh, in designing space uh, for children, which the children will le learn how to turn into a place, uh, we really need to investigate, do research on them, not just uh, what we see as adults' perception fits for children. To me, that is a selfish uh, way of looking at. Uh, this happened to many uh, urban designer, urban planner, municipality officers that look at that. Example, uh, Lassian is things sometimes called nuisance in, let's say, in Jogja, but to the people that come to Lassian, they enjoy it. That make the character of Jogja. So uh, therefore, when, when we design space, I think we need to see how people, in the perception of people using it, not just how we see it. Doing our looking just safety, security, all those, right? Of course, we need to deliver it, but then we need to balance out with how people like to uh, enjoy and participate themselves to that, so that that place become the, that space become their place. They are going to create their, their place. All right. Yes. I hope I yeah. answer your question. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, answer for the question. Uh, and it's also uh, interesting because uh, you can. Uh, compare from uh, some of your student research and uh, I also interest with uh, your experience uh, from the research in uh, Banjarmasin. I mean, uh, from your presentation, uh, you talk about, uh, you, 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 from your experience, you saw some uh, traditional market in Indonesia. So, uh, as a place uh, in Indonesia, uh, how you compare with a traditional market in uh, Malaysia, for example, maybe around your neighborhood? Uh, is it the historical also in Indonesia uh, make uh, the traditional market as a place uh, stronger or it's because the culture who make the place uh, become uh, stronger as a place in Indonesia? Yeah. I think you have you have given the answer. The culture is so intact. Example: mm -hmm. When I go to Pekanbaru, mm -hmm. uh, near my, the uh, near a market, uh, a market called Pasar Dupa, where they sell all these uh, uh, ingredients to uh, bumbu, uh, bumbu, yeah, to make uh, rendang, right? Yeah. Uh, they, they sell it just for that day, and they they prepare it so well. It doesn't happen in Malaysia anymore. Used to be, let's say, 20 years, yes, but now it's all gone. Because we are much, uh, we are way much uh, look at to buy things in the mall. Mm -hmm. So in the mall, uh, the, the interaction between the, the seller and the buyer is very limited. Yeah. It's not even friendly, much. Yeah. Whereas uh, in a Pasar Limpa, it's, or Pasar Tumpa, you call it, it's so yeah. much interactive. So that, so that adds diversity to your experience looking at a place. The point is that, uh, should mm -hmm. we keep it? I think we should. It's part of our, our identity. Mm -hmm. The reason is that uh, many of us look at just uh, first on safety, security, then lo look at privacy. This is one thing that I learned from friends from South Korea, China, and of course uh, from uh, Vietnam and, and from Thailand, that privacy is a thing that created by the Western mm -hmm. to us. To oh, us, actually, okay. we shed a lot. So privacy is a thing that imposed to us. So we have to think twice whether how how we see privacy or should we apply to our urban spaces, right? According to yeah. our culture, we, we need to we need the streets, 
the open space develops the culture of the young and the adults. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, it's a very uh, interesting topic, actually. And maybe my uh, last question, uh, if there is no participant want to ask uh, anymore. Um, about street and open space are social place. Um, it's often uh, I found this case, uh, especially in a high density settlement in Indonesia. Uh, 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 for example, in some places in the central Java, uh, the settlement uh, we call kampung, uh, even uh, they often use the street, uh, the LA, not, not street, but the LA, so the small street uh, in, around their uh, neighborhood as a social place. So they also uh, gather um, monthly meeting for the neighborhood uh, in that uh, area. So actually, uh, can we call that situation as a, as a place uh, for the neighborhood? Yeah, of course, uh, uh, I think if you look at uh, Pawiro pa 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 Taman, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. For, that, it's also like Pawiro Taman. Uh, lots of things happening there, right? Yes. Uh, due to tourism, it's still not as a Wisata resident, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah, many, uh, therefore we see vibrancy and also due to diversity of uh, species, even the, the, the alley is small only one car you can permit to go at yeah, one time right. but then the vibrancy is still there so the mm -hmm. culture plays mm -hmm. important role okay yeah and um well, uh, now uh, we have uh, one question from uh, our participant it's from amabel uh she has three questions for you first uh i often see many people who use the pedestrian as a place to selling some of them almost use the entire uh, pedestrian space, which makes it difficult for people to walk. Do you think this can be said as a positive space because it can create a space that visited by many people or right. even negative space because it has disturbed the comfort of the pedestrian? And then the second oh, hold question... On. Okay. Let me answer that one first. Okay, oh, okay, okay. okay. So uh, we can... Well, uh, okay. if you wear the shoes of the people, hmm. They like to enjoy themselves walking along the streets. And you wear the, the shoes of the, of the seller that sell their food along the streets. To, to them, it's positive. Yes. Right? Because I still remember there's one student uh, of Jogja. She studied at my university this many, I think 15 years ago, 16 years ago. Uh, she looked at informal activities like Lesian, it's a positive. But the municipality of Jogja still is a negative. But if yeah. you were to you want to recognize uh, Jogja is equal to let's say New York, why should we? We have, we have our own norms and culture, right? Yeah. We practice our, how our our people uh, love to practice, uh, love to behave rather than how to behave. Yeah. Uh, the second question is. And the second question is, in designing a place, what is the main consideration for making a positive and successful space? <laughs> wow, that, that's a big uh, question. Uh, too many things. <laughs> but uh, if you uh, look at uh, collective activities of people, that uh, a space should be multifunctional. Public space should be multifunctional. Uh, sometimes it can be used by children early in the school, in the early in the morning by school children. Mm. In the afternoon, it's uh, changed to a place where people sell things. Then in the late, uh, at night, maybe it turns to another thing. Yeah, so... Yeah, you, you look 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 at the culture of the people, how people mm. behave and act on that place. Okay, and uh, last question from her. Uh, according to you, uh, given the COVID nineteen pandemic situation, mm -hmm. how is the arrangement for traders, especially those who spread along the roadside? How is the consideration when a pandemic like this all has to implement the following health protocol, but contrary to the habit of many gather at one point? Uh, a pandemic happens once in 100 years. So it happened okay. this year to us. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, if you keep on social distancing, the vibrancy of trading will be normal. You kill the vibrancy of trading, right? Social distancing. Yeah. So we hope the yeah, mindset is that we hope this is over and we get back to the norms. Yeah. Mm. I, I I I don't believe in social distancing. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, that's very interesting. And I think for now, uh, it will be our last question from the participant. Uh, the question is from uh, Isan. Uh, he, he asked about, in Indonesia, uh, one should the cult culture in each uh, region, but the formation of a district image that is much reviewed by financial factor, almost in every region that has a salam, and how to generate social conflict, how to organize an area that can be financed with successful assistance, given this problem, uh, is it good of the urban image, uh, yeah, like uh, we know uh, from the cartoon movie, for example? <laughs> this question is a big one because it involves uh, sociality, yeah, economy, then even economics. Yes. Uh, part of economics, I, I'm not good in it, so I couldn't answer it well on this. Uh, yeah, well, it, it's, it's a big question. I, I, I couldn't answer it uh, to give a good solution here. Sorry for it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe you can share a little about your experience feel, uh, that have related with this case. Uh, okay, um, you see, um, one of the one of my students is doing research on uh, impact of uh, East kind of Malaysia towards mm -hmm. uh, small districts in in uh, in uh, beside East kind of Malaysia. Uh, East kind of Malaysia is fast developing, uh, therefore much of the land is is being uh, the, 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 the the district that adjacent to kind of Malaysia, the land price is so high. People oh, okay. because of the purchase of the land, right? So uh, the one that benefits a lot are the urban dwellers, but mm -hmm. the ones who are uh, less of we deprive some of it are those are the farmers and also the fishermen. So therefore, uh, in terms of economic wise, the urban dwellers benefits, but the fishermen doesn't have get the benefits. This actually is a thing that this involve we call in human geography. It involve uh, mm -hmm. we call. Um, uh, inequality, for which that uh, the 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 government the, the the government government need to find how to equate this thing, because if not, then some people who are very rich, some people who are, are poor. This happened also in Hanoi. You can see people uh, sell uh, uh, things on have to carry on their shoulders, mm. but along the street or along the same road, people were driving Rolls Royce. So a country, the country like us, Vietnam, this thing will happen. Disparity between the poor and the rich are happening in the town, in the cities. So mm. I hope that it, for the student who answer who question this, mm. I, my suggestion is that you need to travel, open yeah. your eyes, right? Yeah, See, I agree. You observe carefully. We call the uh, everyday landscape. How this everyday landscape shape people's life. Um. Uh, we because we design place for people therefore we need to go to the place to understand do not just uh, uh, hinge yourself on textbook particularly textbook from the americans for the western europe european because they they see it as in their own context which may not totally apply to our our context <clears throat> okay uh thank you so much prof uh well uh I thought uh, it was the last question, but the fact uh, there are other two uh, participants who also asked, do you mind to answer that question? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, the another one is pro, uh, from Pavitra. Uh, the question is, uh, how is the cultural relationship with the sense of place and how can that sense of place be formed or how to place making? All right. Thank you. Um, uh, I like to answer this by looking at one example of my PhD student. She did this one in 2012 uh, in Palembang. 
Okay, I, I, I'm not going to give you the right answer, but I'd like you, you to think about this. Uh, in Palembang, Palembang is famous of the Sungai Musi, right? Yeah. In the Ilir and Ulu are two different ethnics. Mm. In the Ilir are the M Melayu. Mm. In the Ulu are the Arabs and the Chinese. So when uh, my student, Dr. Widya Francisca, who, is, who, who live in Palembang, asked what is the identity of Palembang? The Chinese said that if you like to look at Palembang, I think Palembang, you look at us. When she go to Al Munawar, the settlements of the Arab, the same question posed on them, the same answer were given. Look at us. Then when she crossed the Sungai Musi, go to Kampung Suro and two other kampongs of the Malay, they said that we are native here. If you like to look at Palembang, look at us. What does that mean? It means that everybody has their own sense of place to their settlements. That is thing that, that represents the city. So ask them. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so represent. So that, but that's two different things between uh, identity of place and place identity. Idea of place, uh, Sungai Musi and the bridge, Ampera Bridge is identity of Palembang. But place identity is what we felt by the Chinese who are immigrants, by the Arab who are immigrants, and the native, the, the Malays. They see Palembang in their own perspective. So there's no one straight answer to it. You need to experience it, to ask them, investigate on, the, just put them in your the, the shoes, then you get the right answer. Wow. Yeah, okay. Hmm. That's very nice. Uh, it makes us uh, think about, uh, to answer about the placemaking. And then uh, the next question from Glenn Arya. Uh, if we want to bring back uh, the unused or ineffective, what things should be considered to make it becomes uh, an effective public space? Uh, I, I couldn't hear the first sentence just now. What is it? Okay. Uh, if we want to bring back the ineffective uh, space, oh. what, what things should be considered to make it become an effective public space? Oh, uh, I think you're talking about ineffective, like negative space, right? Yeah, yeah, I uh, think yes. so, like uh, negative space. Uh, you need to do a little bit research on how observe people, how people act to it. Mm. Uh, then uh, introduce things that people love to do it. Mm. Uh, don't charge them much uh, uh, early, high, high charges at uh, early stage. You can increase the charge uh, after you, people keep, keep on accumulate their presence to the place. Yeah. So as I said earlier that uh, we need to understand people, how they act on the place, then we can design the place for them. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your um, response uh, for some questions today. Uh, okay. I think uh, it will be our last uh, question and answer. And uh, from online uh, session today, uh, we can understand that a place not only a physical boundaries that provide space for people, but more importantly, place have to be able to generate interaction between people. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, finally, we come to the end of session, but before I close the event today, and I hope all of you don't mind to open your camera and we can take a picture together, even though we are not in a offline situation. And please, uh, for all the participants, uh, the committee will help us to take a, screen, a screenshot shot, uh, for today. Okay, everyone ready uh, for a while? Uh, also, Prof. Ismail. Please smile. Okay, uh, get it? Yeah. Okay, today we have. Um, 104 participants for this online uh, session. And before I close uh, 
the event, I will announce uh, who the lucky one today that will receive door prize for today. Um, okay, wait for a minute. Uh, do we already have? Okay, now uh, you can see from the screen, uh, the committee give us First, uh, Alchemy book for Istan Ardika, and then uh, for Fochir, uh, there are Amabel and Glenn Aryaputra. Oh, so lucky. I, I get Amabel already received some door prize in some event previously. Oh, congratulations for uh, all of you who get the door prize today. And I would like to say thank you again for our special guest today for the informative and interesting talk uh, and also for the audience for your active participation. Uh, hopefully the presentation will be beneficial for everyone and thank you for your attention and good morning. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wassalamualaikum okay, Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Right. And I hope we'll, we will meet again yep. in Yogyakarta yep. Yep. or yep. even in Kuala Lumpur.